this is the first time this kind of a Chinese propaganda posters ever exhibited in Latin America, I think. And um, the collection was owned by Mr. Yang Pei Ming in Shanghai. So Eric and I um, got in contact with him and visited his incredible collection in the underground museum in Shanghai. And there we discover an incredible collection of all kinds of posters in the 20th century China. And there came the idea of making an exhibition here um, entitled The Cultural Dreams and Political Imagination of Modern China in the 20th Century. So the basic idea is to give a history of China, not in the standard history books, but actually through images, particularly through these very diverse styles of uh, propaganda posters. And then you can see from here that uh, we organized the exhibition in a way quite different from other propaganda poster exhibitions, because we have different themes. From this one, uh, pre-1949, it's about the culling the posters, mostly featuring different images of modern women in China in the first part of the 20th century. And then we move to the different styles, particularly quite influenced by German expressionism and uh, the international woodcuts movement. So here are some woodcuts um, related to the issues of um, revolution, but also to the military strategies and uh, different kind of ideas. And this is an interesting collection because it's not based on chronology. It's actually uh, grouped by style. And you can see they're from different time periods, like that one's from Cultural Revolution. And this one is Chiang Kai-shek pre-1949, um, juxtaposed together with the image of Mao. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is a striking uh, difference between the art of the Republican period and the Maoist period. No? So you have the, the, the woman Chi Pao and the fashion dress of the, of the 1920s and 30s, and then you move towards uh, the 1940s and 50s uh, towards a kind of a unification of the dress codes uh, for, the for the revolution you know, purposes. So here they have the first uh, uh, posters of the 1949, the liberation period, where all the parades were take place in the Beijing. This is Shanghai to celebrate the unification of the country. And then you have, uh, in the 50s, the mass political movements, such as the land reform, and uh, other, uh, also international events, such as the Sino-Russian meetings that took place in the, in the 1949, 1950s. Yeah, one thing quite fascinating, I think, is to see the historical change here. Yeah. Because, for example, these are well, apparently they're the same image, but actually they're not. Mm. Probably, Carlos, you can talk a little bit more about the changes here related to the political culture. Of course, during the first uh, political, mass political campaign, there were some perks inside the party, and some members disappeared from these pictures. This is a picture of the proclamation of the People's Republic of China in 1949, and uh, several uh, revisions of this same picture, uh, some people disappeared. And then we have different styles. So for example, this one is a very rare um, poster because it's in the New Year painting style. And it's a kind of folk art, uh, quite popular in China before 1949. And then after 1949, Mao is promoting this kind of uh, national culture in terms of the image and propaganda production. So he promotes this idea of making more peasant painting based on this New Year style picture. And this one is about, uh, it's called Settling It, but basically it's about the land reform, yeah, right? Land reform. This one is about the collaboration between working class and capitalist class. So at the beginning, the, the so-called United Front called for a, col a col collaboration in the factories between the capitalists that you see him wearing Western suits and the workers wearing these kind of uh, typically working, uh, working class uh, garments. So you see here the evolution and the mm -hmm. symbol of, of the dress in the, in the paintings. And, and then we move forward to the more uh, late 1950s kind of uh, pictures. I think this is one of the best ones that, of the collection, yeah, in, my, yeah. in my opinion, which is the, the, um, the growth uh, of the production and the great leap forward a uh, great mass political campaign uh, who tried to uh, develop China's industrialization with the steel production and the coal production. 
and that's the, then you can see this dragon that is emerging and that is uh, growing with the leadership of the working class and the peasant class in 1959. Yeah, and then we move uh, from the Great Leap forward. There came this question of the Great Famine. I think a lot of historians now are doing research about that. But then afterwards is the Cultural Revolution and perhaps one of the most known <laughs> period yeah. in the modern history of China. And then here we can see um, different styles of posters pro produced during that period. But so one uh, key characteristic about the posters produced in those period is normally the uh, individual artists, they're anonymous, so you cannot see their names. And they are either produced by the national press or by the provincial press. But this one is quite rare, because um, it, it has the artist's name, and according to Mr. Yang, he uh, enthusiastically introduced this one, he said, this is the only poster that he could see still bearing the name of an individual artist and uh, made by the Zhejiang Publishing Press. Of course, and this is also very peculiar, uh, particular in the sense that it has the image of Mao's wife, Jiang Qing, um, who never appears in other posters. So this one is quite special. And we could see from this one, it's a woodcut style. So we want to see the connections of different styles and how uh, in the early part, uh, first half of the 20th century, when the woodcut was considered as avant-garde kind of movement, then in the 1960s, it was actually revived during the Cultural Revolution and used for mass political campaign. And in sharp contrast with the other uh, pictures we have seen of the United Front, here we can see the capitalist class being smashed by the, so it's a, a growing kind of conflict in the Chinese society also. Yeah, and then here it comes to the end of the Cultural Revolution, and this is a really kind mm. of a really interesting image. Yeah. Uh, both a revival of the folk art form, uh, like the Chinese New Year painting, but also of the theme that those are the Gen of Four. And the term Gen of Four was not present in a political discourse during the Cultural Revolution, but toward the end, the political party, they came up with this term, the Gen of Four, and they make them this kind of scapegoat of yeah. history. <laughs> so here is the, marks the end of the um, Cultural Revolution. And the end of Maoism, actually. Yeah. And this one is also very interesting. It's about a one-child policy. And now we can um, see a lot. We, we were moving forward, mm -hmm. actually, to the beginning of the opening up and reform process after the death of Mao. Yeah. So uh, it's a moment where technology, uh, technic, technique, science, starts to have a, a dominant role in the Chinese society in contrast with the Cultural Revolution where activism and poli politics was the main mm -hmm. rule of society. Yeah, for example, in this image, you could see very clearly that the theme of four modernizations. Yeah. So here the technology, you see the train, you see the uh, science, it has a prominent role. And also national defense, national but defense. in the image of a woman, then And also, here's the question of the liberation of thoughts, because uh, <laughs> Lenny, very funny, uh, yeah, <laughs> Lenny was uh, portrayed as a family guy, kind of grandparent, kind of person. Kind of a Lenin Papa Noel, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then this one is uh, made in 1989. Um, I think the the year when the June Fourth Movement in Beijing took place. So. Uh, Sometimes I think um, the posters, that's why we call it cultural dreams and political imagination. It's not really a representation of a reality. Sometimes it's kind of even a subversion of yeah. reality or a fiction of the reality. But from the analysis of those pictures and the just position of those pictures, we can see how the history changes. Mm -hmm. And here also, of course, the international di dimension of the Maoism as a, and all the relationship of China with the third world countries. You see here uh, different uh, pictures about Mao and also other countries of the third world, uh, third world especially uh, considering Latin American countries and, and the relations they, 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 they established with China. 
they are very uh, also very emotional kind of uh, kind of pictures. Yeah, so we divide the uh, exhibition into different sections, and the, the section we just look at is the theme of the third world. And this one comes the individual artist. Uh, this artist is called Ha Chong Wen, and actually we have his signature here because our collector, Mr. Yang, he is a good friend of this artist. And Ha Chong Wen was born in 1925, so his life is more or less in parallel to the Chinese modern history. And it reflects a lot, actually, uh, in his personal styles. So for example, this one is uh, the one that made him really famous. And it's made in 1959 about uh, Chairman Mao. But you cannot see Chairman Mao here, because the theme is to imagine Mao here in the left upper left corner in a symbolic way and then with the image of a modern woman carrying her child a very hopeful very optimistic and feminine but the artist was condemned during the cultural revolution exactly because of this poster they said that mao is not here and this is very bourgeoisie so mm -hmm. the same poster brought him fame but also brought him misfortune And these are about, uh, this one is about Taiwan. It's made in 1958, one year before that poster. And it's about the US. And you can see the dynamics. So this artist, uh, Ha Chong Wen, he, has, um, he had a very special training background. He's from a Hui Muslim family, born in Beijing. And then afterwards, he had this revolutionary calling. So mm -hmm. he went to Chongqing, uh -huh. the government in Chongqing during the Republic of China. And then he studied French realism at that time. So he was really good at sketch and those realistic paintings of people. And then afterwards, as the revolution progressed, he changed his style based on the political situation. So you could see his uh, some like this one is quite influenced by Soviet, but it's made after 1978. So there's a fusion of different styles, and that's why I think posters are the hybrids of yeah. the Chinese history. I think it's a good representation of mm -hmm. the reform and opening up movement, so how science and technology became uh, one of the key issues here for the opening up. Uh, it is a very beautiful picture. Yeah, and then we end the exhibition with the image of Marx and Engels playing with uh, the kid in the garden. Some, somehow depicts a new morality, no? So, uh, in contrast with a struggle, with a class struggle that we find in the Cultural Revolution, here the messages of pacif pacification and, and a new kind of family morale. Yeah, and. Oh, I think I would like to end by reading the line from the uh, Dream of the Red Chamber because I think it uh, captures the essence of this exhibition. Uh, in Chinese, it's Jia Zuo Zhen Shi Zhen Yi Jia Wu Wei You Chu You Hai Wu. So in English, it's uh, truth becomes fiction when the fiction is true, real becomes not real where the unreal is real. So I think that's what this exhibition really offers.